This is going to finish up the rest of Genesis chapter 30. So Genesis 30, 25. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away, that I may go into mine own place and to my country. So Jacob approaches Laban for the approval to go back home. You know, I'm sure he misses his mother, Rebecca. Remember, you know, he's a true mommy's boy. And he probably thinks that Esau has cooled down a little bit by now and that he's not going to beat him up and take his lunch and everything else. So he says in verse 26, Give me my wives and my children. He's saying this to Laban. Give me my wives and my children, for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service, which I have done thee. Remember that Jacob served Laban seven years for Rachel, but Laban tricked him and instead gives him his other daughter, Leah, instead. And then Jacob has to turn around and work seven more years for Rachel. This is impressive because today I can't even find someone to work with me for three months, let alone 14 years. But Jacob ends up doing that and he ends up having Rachel and Leah as his wives and then ends up having Zilpah and Bilhah his wife's handmaidens, as his wives as well. And then he ends up with all kinds of kids from all four wives as well. Verse 27, And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. So that's where you get that famous saying, learn by experience. And, but remember that Jacob is trying to get out of town. And he asks him, you know, he comes up to him and asks him nicely. So remember that when we get on into the next chapters that he asked him nicely about leaving. But Laban has learned from experience that he's better off having Jacob around. Jacob made money for Laban instead of taking it. And that should be your goal when you go to work. Instead of, you know, taking your employer's money in the sense of you're your costing them more than you're worth, help make more for your employer than what they're giving you. I mean, obviously, you're not working for free, but help them make more, you know, do your job, do it better than they would even expect out of you than just going in there and being more of a hindrance than being beneficial. Jacob was a lot more beneficial than he was ever a hindrance. In Genesis thirty twenty eight, it says, And he said, Appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. So Laban wants to know what Jacob's price will be to get him to stay. And this is the point that every worker dreams of getting to with his boss. If you're about to leave your workplace for another workplace, it's a good sign that you're a very beneficial, productive employee if they want to name, if they if they want you to just name your price, name your hour, new hourly wages that you would want if you'll just stay. And I've not had that happen yet, but I did have a guy tell me that if I didn't like my new job, that we could just pretend I went on a vacation and I could just come right back where I left off. But Jacob here in verse 29 and he, Jacob, said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle was with me. Laban knows that Jacob has been a hard worker, and that he's taking care of his cattle. He spent all his time with the, those animals. He was an expert when it came to Laban's cattle, and that will come in handy for Jacob in a minute. But he, Laban knows, he, thou know, uh, Jacob says, Thou knowest how I have served thee. He knows he's been a hard worker, and and worked right. And Ecclesiastes 9.10 says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Uh, work hard enough to where you could go to your supervisor and say, Thou, thou knowest that I've worked hard for you. Uh, most people can't say that. The supervisor know that most people are goof-offs and don't do anything. But it says in verse 30, For it was little which thou hadst before I came, and is now increased into a multitude. And the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming. And now when shall I provide for mine own house also? So Jacob points out that Laban had very little 
before he showed up. It says, For it was little which thou hadest before I came. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but Laban's daughter Rachel had the care of Laban's flock before Jacob got there. So that proves that uh, it wasn't very much. Now, just as the Lord promised, if you're friends with if you're friends and you bless Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then you'll be blessed. So the Lord's proven that through Jacob here. Laban's cattle increased into a multitude with Jacob around. Jacob asked Laban, and now, when shall I provide for mine own house also? I mentioned before that Jacob isn't my favorite Bible character, but I do love that he's willing to work and work with his hands. It says in 1 Timothy 5, 8, But if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Uh, I can't stand a man that won't get out of bed and work to provide for his wife and kids. I mean, that guy's the definition of a loser. And that's one of the only types of people that I would ever want to call that. But uh, the Lord is fulfilling the promise that he gave to Abraham through Jacob. And remember when he said, back in Genesis 12, 3, he said to Abraham, I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Laban is very blessed because of Jacob. Laban wants to keep him around. Uh, he's wanting to offer him any, any price to stay. Not to mention, uh, he's, uh, Jacob now has his two daughters. They're two handmaids. And uh, Jacob now has Laban's grandsons that are probably around seven years old. But those guys would grow up and probably be very useful to Laban as well. So you can imagine why Laban wants Jacob to hang around. And he said, what shall I give thee? He's still, you know, saying, you know, what will it take to keep you around? And Jacob said, thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. So Jacob's a reasonable guy here. He doesn't want anything great. He's really just mostly tired of Laban, you know, taking advantage of him. I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and of such shall be my hire. So pretty much what this is saying is, all Jacob is asking for is the spotted, speckled cattle and goats. He's wanting... The he's just asking Laban for the less desirable animals, the ones that are spotted and speckled. And he says, So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come, when it shall come for my hire before thy face. Everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted stolen with me. So all Jacob is going to ask for is the less desirable animals that have these markings by, with, uh, in their color. He wants the ones like that, which aren't, you know, with, the ones which aren't yet born and the ones that are alive and are currently with those colors. And evidently, most of the animals were, you know, like white sheep and black goats and brown cattle. And Jacob knows the d distinguished colored animals would be the ones which are less desirable to Laban. So he's probably thinking, well, he's going to agree to this because, you know, these are, I'm just asking for the less desirable animals. So Jacob tells Laban, everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted stolen with me. So if any of the cattle are born, Without the distinguishing color that Jacob chose, the spotted, speckled, ring straked, and all that, then Laban gets to take those. And if Jacob doesn't give those, then they're counted as stolen. So verse thirty-four, and Laban said, "Behold, I would it be, I would it might be according to thy word." So Laban probably thought that uh, those animals birthing such abnormally marked animals in a large quantity. It wasn't going to happen, so he's like, this is a great deal, I agree. I mean, he's probably thinking in his mind, you know, you're not going to get very many of the cattle if you're just asking for the weirdly colored ones. 
Then verse 35, And he removed that day the he goats that were ring straked and spotted. This is Laban removing these goats that are ring straked and spotted, and all the she goats that were speckled and spotted, and every one that had some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep, and gave them into the hand of his sons. You see, the, the brown sheep, even though that's like a, a, a solid color, that would be a rare for the brown sheep. They would mostly be white. So once again, he chose the rare colored sheep. And so Laban goes through and separates all those ring streaks spotted and speckled and all that had some white in it and all the uh, rare colored sheep. And he gives them to his sons. And then they take those and they separate all those weirdly colored animals three days journey from one another. So they're not going to get mixed up. You got the ones that Jacob gets over here, three days journey, and then you got the Laban's. And this is actually going to help Jacob later on because it gives him at least a three day head start when he flees from Laban. And since Jacob only got these rare colored animals, it makes it seem that Jacob's wages are going to be very little. But remember that Jacob is not called a supplanter for nothing. He, don't forget that he's a trickster. So verse 36, and he set three days journey betwixt himself. In other words, between, like betwixt between himself and Jacob. And Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. Now, what Jacob is about to do is set up a six-year scheme that will leave him with the best of the best of Laban's flocks. So, Jacob the con man is about to con the other con man. And Jacob took him rods of green poplar and of the hazel and chestnut tree and peeled white strakes in them and made the white appear which was in the rods. So Jacob, he's pretty much just taking these branches, the green poplar, hazel, and chestnut tree branches, and just pulling the bark off of them and, you know, making streaks in them, these white streaks. And he set the rods which he had peeled before the flocks in the gutters, in the watering troughs, you know, where they're going to be drinking. And when the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. So Jacob takes these branches that he peeled and peeled the bark off of to the point you could see white streaks in them and he places them in the gutters where the where the animals would come and drink water from. And to a lot of us this is, seems kind of superstitious what he's going to do. And I'm not completely certain whether uh, Jacob just knew something that we don't know or if God actually helped him along with this which is entirely possible because you know Laban has been you know taking advantage of him and being you know just a, sub, a supplanter himself a trickster himself maybe the Lord is now going to turn the tables on Laban and show him that he's going to reap what he sows and maybe the Lord is the one that's uh, going to perform all this that we're about to see but somehow the flock that see the rods that have the white streaks as they conceive, when they see the white streaks in these uh, uh, branches, these rods, it causes their babies to be born ring streaked, speckled, and spotted. Uh, but it says in verse 40, And Jacob did separate the lambs and set the faces of the flocks toward the ring streaked and all the brown in the flock of Laban. And put his own flocks by themselves, and put them not unto Laban's cattle. And it came to pass, whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive, that Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters, that they might conceive among the rods. So Jacob took the strongest cattle. And he would have known which, what, what's the strongest cattle, because all this experience, all this experience being around Laban's cattle, and uh, he took the strongest ones and put the rods, you know, the branches that he peeled the bark off of, he put those in front of the strong cattle so that when they conceived, they would come out ring straight, speckled, and spotted. And see, that's the colors that Jacob chose for himself. So therefore now, all the strong ones that are born are going to be ring straight, speckled, and spotted. So Jacob's getting 
a lot of cattle and he's getting all the strong cattle so he's you know he's really deceiving laban really deceive laban with what he's doing here in verse 42 but when the cattle were feeble he put them not in so the feebler were laban's and the stronger jacob's if it were the weak animals he didn't put them in front of the peeled rods to conceive that way they wouldn't come out ring straight speckled and spotted because those are going to be his and therefore all the weak cattle would just be laban's and jacob he's being deceitful here once again but the lord you know could have allowed you know this all this to happen because laban's also deceitful and he's got to reap what he sows as well and it says in verse 43, And the man increased, which is Jacob, the man increased exceedingly, and had much cattle, and maid servants, and mid men servants, and camels, and asses. So he came to Laban with nothing. But now he's got cattle, all this cattle, two wives, all these children, all these maid servants, men servants, camels, and asses. So it seemed as if Jacob wouldn't make much wages with this deal that he had with uh, Laban. It seemed like his wages is going to be next to nothing. But he actually increased exceedingly with much cattle. But that'll finish up Genesis chapter 30.